I'm Jay Timmons. I'm the president and CEO of the National Association of Manufacturers. We launched Manufacturers for Sensible Regulations because we, you know, we are really excited about the fact that Congress and the Biden administration has focused so much on growing the manufacturing economy in the United States. But even though that's a great uh, forward-looking agenda, a lot of the regulatory agencies are are creating impediments to um, allowing that to happen. So we want to call attention to the, to the barrage of regulations that manufacturers are facing right now. I can give you a lot of examples of some of the, the more concerning ones that we have. I think about uh, the scope three regulations coming out of the SEC or the ethylene oxide regulation coming out of the EPA. Um, or there's just really a, there's a ton of regulations. We, we have a hundred regulations out of 30 different agencies that we're actively engaged in at the NAM. We've never seen this level before uh, in any administration. So it's really the volume and the number that are challenging. We've, we've, had, uh, we, we've had reports from some manufacturers that they've received 600 requests from information from a regulator, just totaling 40,000 pages. So it's this type of a burden that puts a a chill on investment. We're not saying don't regulate. I think that's the most important message here. We know that manufacturing has to be regulated. It should be regulated. We want to be safe. We want to be. We want to make sure that uh, the world is a healthier place. And there's no better place to do that than in the United States. But sometimes we are seeing re regulatory agencies kind of reaching for the stars and for something that may sound really great in a press release, but is simply not achievable. The average cost, now this is a nine-year-old study. I just want to point that out. Um, so you can kind of deduce how much more this cost burden is going to be in 2023, and we are re-upping uh, that study. But the average cost per for, for an employer, per employee per year is around $10,000 for, for regulations. That's every single employee. For manufacturers, that number doubles, $20,000 per employee per year. But for a small manufacturer, somebody who's just doing everything they can to make it and get by, that cost jumps to $35,000 per employee per year in regulatory compliance costs. That's before this regulatory barrage. This That's before all the inflationary factors that came into place over the last couple of years. So the, the, the cost pressures on small manufacturers are just extraordinary. And what we're seeing is we're seeing a lot of small manufacturers say, you know, we just can't do this anymore. We can't make this particular uh, product that is so essential for the supply chain. Or in some cases, we see them say, you know, we're gonna just pack it up. Or even we're gonna let others in China or other uh, countries around the world make these products because we simply can't do it anymore. If you see other administrations, and the ones I've worked with are Bush 43, Obama, Trump, um, what you had was you had somebody in the White House who was always looking over the entire uh, whole of the federal government to say, our objective is to, is to grow jobs, grow the economy, grow manufacturing. So let's make sure that all the agencies are talking to each other. Let's make sure that from a centralized point, we are saying that this regulation can, can proceed as is. This regulation may not be achievable, so let's make sure that the timeline makes sense. And this regulation it doesn't make any sense at all, and it's just gonna simply cause people to close up shop or close up their businesses. If you had that kind of coordination, um, that would better help uh, to, uh, to bring the whole government together on the, on the same, uh, for the same objectives. We, we have asked the White House to appoint this type of a, a manufacturing quarterback, if you will, uh, to, to look through all of the agency proposals to make sure that, that they're all kind of in sync and they're not, they're not uh, bumping against each other or, or, or counteracting each other or causing undue burdens. A group of manufacturing associations put together this letter to go to the White House Chief of Staff uh, to make sure that the White House was, was acutely aware of not only our support for the Biden agenda to grow manufacturing in the United States, but our concern that many of the agencies in the president's own administration are holding back that progress, are holding back our ability 
to access the funds that were uh, were made available through Chips and Science and uh, the Inflation Reduction Act. And that letter was uh, also making a recommendation that we have a quarterback to kind of oversee all of the manufacturing priorities of the administration and oversee the actions of the agencies. Well, 130 plus associations signed that letter. 49 out of 50 state manufacturing associations, the only one that didn't sign was Virginia. I've, every other state wants to see some action on regulatory relief. So I think this is a message that is coming across loudly and clearly. Keep doing the good things to advance manufacturing but make sure that the entire government is focused on the same agenda.